BlackBerry may be like the Phoenix, a company once down and out, rising from the ashes and getting ready to uh, soar once again. Fasten your seatbelts, folks. This, this is going to be a good one. In the early 2000s, BlackBerry was the gold standard of mobile technology. With their signature keyboard, top tier security, and dedicated user base, they seemed, well, they seemed pretty unstoppable. At their peak, BlackBerry controlled nearly 20% of the global smartphone market, becoming a symbol of efficiency and security in mobile communications. However, that dominance didn't last, as Apple and Android revolutionized the smartphone industry with touchscreen innovation, BlackBerry, well, they quite simply struggled to keep up. Their resistance to change, coupled with a series of missteps in software and app development, led to their, well, very, very rapid decline. By 2010, BlackBerry's smartphone business was all but dead, and many investors wrote them off as a relic of the past. Other than the Wall Street Bets community and a few diehard fans, BlackBerry was, was essentially done. Or, well, or were they? BlackBerry was not about to fade into history. Instead of clinging to the smartphone industry, they pivoted to software, focusing on cybersecurity, enterprise solutions, and automotive technology. This, this was definitely the best move they could have made for sure. As a result, BlackBerry is now a leader in cybersecurity, specializing in AI-driven security solutions for businesses and government agencies. Their QNX operating system powers millions of vehicles worldwide, and their shift towards securing the Internet of Things has positioned them for a, for a new wave of growth. So yes, BlackBerry, BlackBerry may just be relevant again. A sub to the channel lets you maintain the relevance of uh, future content. One area that makes BlackBerry particularly intriguing is their role in quantum-proof encryption. As quantum computing advances, it threatens to break traditional encryption methods. This, this creates a massive need for quantum-resistant cybersecurity. BlackBerry is actively developing solutions to protect data in the post-quantum era, which, which could make them a crucial player in the future of cybersecurity. Of course, if we want to know whether BlackBerry has made themselves into a compelling investment option, we are... Uh, we're going to need to jump into some fundamentals. If there are numbers involved, we need to call on the, the Admiral of Arithmetic, the calculations are the one and only Mr. Math. We will, as usual, start off with a little bit of their surface data. At the time of recording, their current value is coming in at $7.65, and they have a market cap of $4.09 billion, their beta coming in at 0 0.97, so they're pretty much in line with the uh, market average volatility. When it comes to earnings per share, that's coming in at negative 0 0.35. We do have to expect to see some bad numbers with this one, as they, they have been in that dumpster for a very, very long time. Also, keep in mind, this data is coming from their last quarterly that does not reflect their recent turnaround. Seeing that they are unprofitable, we, we will not look at their PE ratio, but instead we're going to look at their price to sales ratio. So just for those of you who need a little refresher on what that is, that's a ratio that measures how much investors are willing to pay for each dollar of their revenue. In the case of uh, BlackBerry, their price to sales ratio is coming in at 5.00. Amongst their peers, the average is coming in at 3.8. A, a few of those peers include Conexus with a price to sales ratio of 6.3. Texas has a price to sales ratio of 3.8 and a silo just coming in at 3.4. A higher price to sales ratio usually indicates that they are overvalued or experiencing strong growth potential. In the case of BlackBerry, I kind of think that we might be seeing a mixture of both. All right, let's take a look at their price to book ratio. That comes in at 4.40. Amongst those same peers, uh, it's actually got an average of 6.5. Their return on equity, we know this is going to be in the dumpster. It's negative 20.8%. Return on assets, another negative, negative 12.5%. This surface data was not particularly very good, but on the bright side, it could have actually been worse, and I almost was expecting it to be a little worse than it was. 
Oh boy, let's peel back another layer and take a look at their cash situation. They have a revenue of 638 million and we're back in the negatives. Their earnings negative 151 million. Once again, I was expecting the earnings to be on the negative. However, on the bright side, those earnings are projected to grow by 66.04% per year. So that's at least a little bit of uh, sunshine there. Their profit margin, once again, another negative number, negative 23.7%. Their free cash flow, negative 53 million. Operating cash flow, negative 40 million. Oh boy, <laughs> we got ourselves we got ourselves a lot of uh, a lot of red or a lot of red numbers. I have a feeling all this negative data is not it's not going to help when it comes to projecting their fair value. So their current value, once again, seven dollars and sixty five cents, using a discounted cash flow model, we get a fair value of uh, well a dollar twenty six. So that does place them overvalued at five hundred and seven point four percent. Can the analysts save us? No, nope, no. Nope. The one year target, $5.07. So that's a drop of 33.7%. Once again, they will be having a new quarterly drop pretty much the day after I film this. So it could be interesting to see if that data is able to improve things a wee, a wee bit. Okay, let's turn the page and take a look at their returns data. We're going to jump straight to the returns because they do not have a dividend. So on that three-year return on investment, that's coming in at negative 3.65%. That, that's actually not as bad as I was expecting. On their one-year return on investment, that's this is a nicer, much nicer number, 109.59%. Their three-year annualized, that comes in at negative 1.23%. Here is where we see the story of the phoenix rising from the ashes of the old BlackBerry. You can see in their one year, and quite and quite literally, that explosion in their share price, it actually began in late November. So it's more of a three-month return of Palooza. Okay, let's take that last leap and uh, take a look at that debt data. They have a total debt of $195 million, and their total equity, that's coming in at $725 million. I'm liking this. Debt to equity ratio, 26.9%. Holy banana bread. I was honestly expecting their debt to be much larger. So this, this is a pleasant surprise for sure. With that being said, I will still add that their debt to equity ratio has increased from 23.9% to 26.9% over the past five years. Looking at their cash and cash equivalents, very nice, 220 million. I, I do like that they have enough cash to pay off their debt if they chose to. This, this is a good thing. On their short term, their assets come in at 455 million. Liabilities, 332 million. I, uh, I really like seeing those assets bigger than their liabilities. On the long term, assets coming in at 854 million. Liabilities, 252 million. Once again, I'm uh, I'm liking what I'm seeing. The long term looks great. There is nothing wrong with their debt situation. However, their cash flow is another is another thing altogether, and it will obviously not cover the debt or the servicing of that debt. One other nice thing that we'll add in: they have had pretty much no share dilution, so that's that's pretty darn good. Okay, I do think I have enough data for the. Uh, the final verdict. If we only looked at the fundamentals, I I would be concerned big time. For BlackBerry has their uh, their serious lack of cash flow, and that that will be problematic at best. Even with a great debt situation, a negative cash flow can result in more debt, and that that could upset their nice debt situation. Now, in all fairness, even in their worst years, they still have managed to keep it pretty pretty much under control. Now, you do have to factor in one thing, and that is that they have made changes to the company to streamline and refocus towards their automotive and cybersecurity business. Just recently, they sold their Silence Endpoint Security Options to Arctic Wolf for $160 million in cash and $5.5 million in common shares of, uh, well, Arctic Wolf. This restructuring has created more cash to keep them running smoothly for the time being. And if we continue to move down the quantum highway, it will only be a good thing for BlackBerry. 
is BlackBerry a good investment? I I still see them as a little speculative, but leaning much further to the safer side of speculation. I think they are very worthy of being on your watch list, but I wouldn't go all in. At this juncture, I will add that I do think there is some real potential there, and I would love to revisit them next year, as I, as I think we will have a much better picture on whether or not this restructuring is a moonshot or uh, just a dusted off dream. If you are interested in BlackBerry, don't forget to put in a whole heaping helping of due diligence before you place any of your hard-earned money on the table. <laughs> Let's continue that learning journey by checking out this video on EBIT. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.